All right, for more on all this, former Green Beret and Florida Congressman Michael Waltz. And, sir, I feel like we have to start by asking you about how four of these members of the new government were released in that prisoner swap after, with Bo, uh, for Bo Bergdahl under the President Obama. And you have very personal, uh, I'm sure, feelings about this because you know, this resulted in something that really changed your life. Yeah, Dana, you know, every time I don't think this situation can get any worse, it does. Uh, as you know, I led uh, special operations forces in the search for Bergdahl, uh, who we knew at the time had stacked up his gear, left his weapon behind, sent emails to his father denouncing America and, and deserted his post. Yet we stopped everything because we don't leave fellow Americans behind, even deserters. Uh, and, and good soldiers were killed in that search looking for him. And, and then to see, mm -hmm. fast forward, to see him declared a hero uh, by Susan Rice and the same people that were around Obama that are now around Biden, yeah. uh, on top of this trade, uh, allowing the Taliban to pick its most wanted, its top draft picks uh, out of Guantanamo to now see them in charge of what is quickly becoming a terrorist super state is just a slap in the face. Wow. Uh, and to have this on the week of 9-11, the 20th anniversary, it's just outrageous. And frankly, it's unforgivable. The uh, one of them is the acting director of Intel. <laughs> How's that going to go? Acting minister of information yeah. and culture. We saw what happened many years ago, especially with women. Uh, and then there's deputy secretary of defense on there as well. Uh, Michael, this is what we can report. And we're trying to track this all over the globe, as you are as well. And frankly, a lot of this is confusing. You know, who can get out, who can get out, who can't get out, who's allowing uh, departures, who's denying it. Our digital team is reporting the Department of State has refused official approval for private flights. That means organizations, a lot of them from America, maybe some Western European countries, are trying to get people to safety. Jen Griffin is saying, but there's context here now because the Taliban is essentially serving as the TSA for every flight that may or may not leave. So, I mean, th well, th right. this, is a, th this is a massively confusing and mixed up soup here, Michael. Well, and, and on top of it all, Bill, Siraj Haqqani, the head of the Haqqani network that is a serial hostage taker, has been holding Americans hostage continuously for two decades, including holding Navy veteran Mark Frerichs hostage right now as we speak. The leader of that group is now in charge of the Interior Ministry that decides who stays and, and who goes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's truly unbelievable. Oh, by the way, on the uh, FBI's most wanted list, 10 million bounty, very close to Al Qaeda, and is responsible, amongst other things, for a truck bombing in 2011 that killed dozens of American soldiers. That's now who, who's in charge of deciding, I guess, according to Blinken, who has appropriate documents and who doesn't. That is the, uh, the, the most bureaucratic doublespeak coming out of the Secretary of State. And then the other piece of that is we're seeing now from emails they're sending these various veter veterans groups who are heroically stepping up to get Americans out that, well, we're not going to help you with landing rights in other countries, but we won't oppose it either. Mm -hmm. So good luck. Uh, good luck with that. Look, I, I want to say this very clearly. The State Department should be working <clears throat> with these groups. They should be forming a task force and pulling these groups together in a public-private partnership w focused on the mission, not taking credit or being bureaucratically embarrassed or saying my way is the only way. They should, we should be working together as Americans, public-private partnership, We've got no diplomats, no troops on the ground, but these groups are trying to get it done, and we should be helping, not hindering and throwing bureaucratic obstacles in the way. Congressman, uh, it, it, the Taliban has basically said that looking forward uh, in the future, a couple of days here on Saturday, it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, that day, they anticipate you know, having a big ceremony showing their new government. And... I, I just wonder what you think about that. Like, you signed up to serve after we were attacked. And to, to have this happen on the very day on 9-11, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, Dana, honestly, and I think I speak for so many, it, it's paining my soul. I, I, um, it, it, it is... It, 
it hurts me to my core. Uh, and, but I do want to say very clearly to so many veterans, Gold Star families, victims of 9-11, uh, we, we've all said it, but I want to say it again. Your sacrifice was not in vain. And entire generations of, of Americans grew up without planes flying into buildings or suicide bombers on school buses. But to see the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and Haqqani back in charge, us to go back where we were before 2001, uh, is is gut-wrenching, it's awful. And what I keep asking for is where's the accountability? Who is going to stand up and say, here are our mistakes, it shouldn't have happened this way. But instead, we seem to have uh, this administration with their foot on the gas, hmm. creating an Iran-style terrorist super state that future American soldiers or future victims are going to have to deal with. And that's what has me so mad yeah. and so heartbroken. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for coming back today. Michael Walsh, Congressman, uh, Republican from Florida.